The earth is waking up from the winter sleep. It's getting warmer and greener, trees are starting to bloom again, and everything is ready for a new year to start. Yes, the Iranian New Year. As the solar calendar says, the first day of spring is a perfect time to start a new year. We call this day Nowruz, that means a new day. Nowruz usually starts on March 21st and lasts for about two weeks with all the traditions and funs and runs. Nowruz is the day of vernal equinox that marks the beginning of the spring in northern hemisphere. The moment the sun crosses the celestial equator, that I have no idea what that means, Day and night are in the same length. This moment is the start of the spring that is not a fixed time. It changes every year due to the duration of the Earth rotation, which is 365 days and 6 hours. So it changes every year for about 6 hours. It's interesting to note that in 2010, the UN General Assembly included Nowruz in its calendar as the start of the new year in Iran and Afghanistan that 300 million people celebrated around the world. But where does it come from? It's very old. This is a Persepolis relief from 500 years BC. Of course, the lion and the cow are symbols. Day and night, warm season and cold season, light and darkness, all of them. The lion triumphs over the cow. So, no ruse is coming. Yeah, it's that aged. After Islam, the next kingdoms who weren't Iranian didn't like these things that much, so they almost banned all the ancient ceremonies. But Nowru survived. We can say for two reasons. First, it was the biggest festival and very important for the people. And second, apparently at that time people would give gifts to the kings at Nowru. So they thought, this one is a very meaningful and elegant ceremony. We keep this one. But I don't know how much their Nowruz was like ours. Would they shake their houses too? Yeah, the first thing we do for Nowruz is khune tekuni, that literally means shaking the house. In this step, you should clean everything in the house perfectly. And yeah, this is a part of the celebration. It starts about a month before Nowruz, or more, or less. It depends on your mom. And it's all about refreshing. You shake your house carefully and prepare it to welcome the new year. At this point, there's always a happy woman on TV who says, it's not all about cleaning the house. You should wipe all the hatred out of your hearts too. It's the best time go and make peace with your friends and don't carry all those bad feelings with you into the new year. Okay, I'll try it, but honestly, Nowruz has too much expectations from us. In the meantime, don't forget to grow a sabze, which is a kind of grass planted in a dish, usually from wheat. Now it's a few days left. We color some eggs as a symbol of fertility. And then, shopping! You have to have new clothes for the new year. Now, everywhere is clean, everyone in their new dresses, sitting around a sofre, waiting for the new year. Sofre can be translated to tablecloth, but it's not just for the table. Actually, the traditional way to use a sofre is to put it on the floor, on a Persian carpet, and sit around it. This sofre is called, or it's going to be called, Sofreye haft sin, or the seven S's. We put seven items that start with the letter S on it. As you know, the number seven is special. It's a holy number in many cultures. But the S's, each of them has a meaning. Sip symbolizes beauty and health. Serke or vinegar shows satisfaction and eternity. Samanu. A great dessert or food, I can say, that uh, I think most people would just buy and never eat. But it's very nutritive and very healthy because its sweetness comes from uh, wheat germs, not sugar. And it's also very early. People used to make it from a long, long time ago. Sear or garlic represents medicine and health. Somak is a sour spice that people mostly use on two occasions. Have seen and kebab. It makes it very delicious. 
So Mark represents patience and new beginning. Patience for a new beginning. Sanjit represents love and wisdom. Yes, these two get along so well here. Now, the most important one, Sabze, represents rebirth. People sometimes put Sa'at, Seke or Sombul on their half sins. But it's wrong. It should be eatable and herbal. But it's not all about us. There's also another common item on half scene. Fish. Yes, goldfish as a symbol of life, I think. Some people say it's kind of cruel to act with fishes like this. Breeding them in a small place and they will just live for a few days on half scene and done. But some others say you should know how to keep it and we can keep it for three, four years. I don't know. I never really liked them. I remember when I was a child, I would do this to see what would happen to the fish. And each time the wicked wild fish would bite me. So <laughs> keeping them is not really easy. My family and I thought a few years ago that buying a fish and murdering it at the start of the year doesn't show life that much. So we simply do this. And some sources say people used to do this in ancient time. You can do this too. By the way, water and mirror show honesty and purity. Then we need a book, a holy or poetry book. I use both, there's enough space. And my ugly egg. <laughs> you know, I think the right way to color them is to boil them with something like an onion peel that gives them a kind of red color, like my father's grandma used to do. She would give them to us a few weeks before Noru's. I remember once it was Noru's and my cousin and I were playing and suddenly we felt hungry. So we simply peeled the eggs of half seen and ate them. When our parents found out, they were panicked. They thought that something's gonna happen to us, but nothing happened and we're so light. The point of the story was that uh, half seen has magical features. Do not underestimate it. And of course, to complete the celebration, we need some sweets as a symbol of uh, sweetness. Okay, it's ready. But I always wondered why S? And did the ancient people really do all these things? I mean, they wouldn't do something just because it's interesting or they didn't have Instagram to compare their half scenes together. So I studied about it and the result was noticeable. When I look at the current half scene, it's easier for me to accept what some experts believe. The story of half scene instead of half seen. Apparently, the tradition of growing grains at the start of the year has deep roots in Iranian culture. In the old period, before Noruz, people would uh, plant some grains on top of some columns made of clay, and they were kept until the last day of Noruz. Each of these plants were more fertile, would produce a better crop that year, and were chosen to be the product of the year. But as I told you, it wasn't just a decoration. They would wait until their sabzes made new grains, and then they'd make bread with them. So it really makes sense to me. With the pass of time, sini or salver turned to sin which is a letter in the Persian alphabet. Oh my god, there's no half scene. Oh, my life was a lie. I should bake bread out of my sabza to be a true Iranian. No, there's no need to do that. You know what? I think the most important S here is sofre. No matter what's on it, it gathers us together on the most beautiful time of the year. The essential part is sitting around one thing, everyone looking at it, and praying for a better year in silence. And then, Happy New Year! There are a lot of kisses and hugs and Saleno Mubarak. And a two week holiday that on its last day we go out and enjoy the nature and set our sabzas free. And then just going back to ordinary life and school. And I think we can finish here. Yes, that was Norris. If you liked it, just like it. I'm Sarah and in this channel I show you my country, Iran and the things you've never heard about it. Don't forget to subscribe and Salano Mubarak.